What is going on internet? My name is Lou and I make Linux videos and I put them on the internet. Tonight's video we're going to be reviewing Manjaro Linux 0.8.7 XFCE 64-bit edition. Now let's just cut to the chase here. Manjaro Linux, two thumbs up. I love the Manjaro team, love everything they're doing with their distribution. Um, they're very nostalgic and reminiscent of early Linux Mint and in my opinion that's a great thing. Um, they're differentiating themselves amongst the other distributions with their development. They're not just taking a bunch of applications and stuffing them inside of an XFCE desktop. They're truly developing. They've, uh, you know, they've come out with their own suite of custom tools, and they've also ported over some tools from Linux Mint, ironically. So, you know, and I don't think that that's a bad thing. They've given a lot of credit to the Mint team. You know, but they've gotten things like a graphical installer working on a loosely based Arch Linux distribution. Um, and before I get into the actual review, I want to qualify the statement I just made. So oftentimes you'll get Arch Linux users that kind of get their panties in a twist about that statement saying that Manjaro Linux is not Arch Linux. And I would have to maybe half agree with that. Um, I'm over in the wiki here and we're in the AUR section and I'm just going to read you guys certain parts of this and it says although Manjaro is 100% Arch Linux compatible, we're going to focus on this next statement, being, being based on Arch Linux itself, it is not possible to access their official repositories for use in Manjaro. You could say that that statement is true and you could also say that it's untrue. So essentially when you go to install a standard package uh, in Manjaro Linux, you are not accessing the Arch Linux repositories, okay? You are accessing Manjaro repositories. Uh, now, the only time you're accessing a Arch repository is when you install something from the AUR or the Arch user repository. Now, the Manjaro team does this for a few different reasons, and it says here that Manjaro uses its own repositories in order to ensure that any software packages that are accessible, system updates and applications, have been fully tested and are stable before release. Now, you're going to find that packages in Manjaro Linux are generally one week to two weeks behind um, Arch Linux. Okay, now that oftentimes is a very good thing because there's bugs that creep in sometimes, not a lot, but occasionally in the uh, Arch um, repos and specifically obviously the packages. And within that week or two of lag time, those bugs get to get squashed and fixed before they make it into the Manjaro repos. So I've run both Arch Linux as well as Manjaro and I have found that Manjaro is much more stable than Arch. Now again, if you're an Arch fan, I'm not saying that Arch isn't stable. All I'm saying is that I've had less problems personally on my desktop using Manjaro Linux. And that would actually uh, be the case for 0.8.7. I haven't had any system crashes, any system lockups, any errors, anything. It's been very, very stable for me. So, you know, in terms of the relationship between Manjaro and Arch, there you have it. Manjaro also has specific repos set up for things like AMD or ATI drivers that Arch Linux uh, now does not support anymore. So Manjaro is adding um, obviously their own parts of their own system and uh, their own developed tools into their repos as well, which you can't find in the Arch repositories. So that is kind of the relationship between Arch Linux and Manjaro Linux. So it is 100% Arch compatible, but I would basically say that it's loosely based on Arch Linux. So with that, you get some benefits. You have a rolling distribution, although you could say that Manjaro is probably more of a snapshot-like distribution. Um, so you've got bleeding edge software. So if you're anything like me, I love bleeding edge. Oftentimes the newer software has bug fixes. The newer software has you know new features <clears throat> and new innovations. So I really like that. Also, you know, compared to say Ubuntu 1204, if we go and open up Thunar, our file manager here, here's another good um, uh, example. <clears throat> I have a Android device that's running uh, Jelly Bean. Now, anything that's running, I believe, Ice Cream Sandwich or newer, if you're in Ubuntu 1204, has MTP issues. So I would basically use the Android SDK when I was running elementary OS because the MTP support was not good. Um, there was workarounds, but quite frankly, I didn't want to have to, you know, do a bunch of, you know, hacked ways of getting MTP support working. I wanted it native or I would just use the SDK. Now when you're dealing with a large number of files, 
you know, using the SDK becomes a little daunting. So here in Manjaro 0.8.7, that's not a problem. I've connected my Android device to my computer. All I have to do is now select it in the left pane here inside Thunar, the file manager, and I have both my internal storage as well as my 64 gigabyte SD card available for me to browse, pull, and uh, push files too. So that is really, really nice. The Android support is a lot better here in Manjaro Linux. Also, they've done a lot of things to make very common Linux issues simple. And by that I mean, obviously, we talked about the graphical installer. You know, if you want to use an Arch or Arch-based system, oftentimes you're using a command line installer. And if you're a fairly new Linux user, you know, that's going to be kind of scary. Even in even a, I would say, intermediate user, that becomes a bit of a task. However, the graphical installer is a huge addition. Also, you know, how to install packages. You don't have anything like a software center or even synaptic package manager in Arch Linux. However, um, here in Manjaro Linux, they have their own tool called Pamac. Pamac, think of it if you've used Debian or if you've used Ubuntu as something very similar to synaptic, only not as feature rich, but pretty simple. So over here we have these tabs, search, groups, state, and repos. Okay, so you can you know browse the specific repository, whether it's extra, community, multi-lib, local, core, so on and so forth. You can either remove a package, reinstall a package, or if it's a package that you don't have already, for instance, um, let's see if it can find screen key. It's maybe in the... Yeah, I think screen key is in the AUR. So this is a nice point and click way to install applications or uninstall applications. Also, proprietary drivers. Um, Manjaro has, and we'll go over here to new features, have their own automatic detection and installation tools uh, for your proprietary drivers. Now, when I downloaded the ISO, I booted into the installation that uses non-free drivers. So the tools that Manjaro has automatically detected I was using a NVIDIA card and it installed the appropriate drivers. So I have the 32515 driver installed as soon as I booted my system. Um, phenomenal. Awesome. It even uh, generated a um, xorg.com file for me as well. So that's a huge tool. Proprietary drivers is always one of the biggest hangups, I think in a um, modern Linux desktop for most users, especially new users, and the Manjaro team has handled that right out of the get-go. It also has its own automatic update manager. I've actually disabled that because I like to do those things uh, myself manually, but you know, in terms of updating, again, it's going to do that for you automatically. They've got their Manjaro settings. So the settings manager right now only has a couple of things in there. It has language options, user accounts, and keyboard settings, but I'm sure they're going to you know, add more to those uh, things in the future. One of the other nice things, if we go into desktop settings, actually, no, not desktop settings, the settings manager. We have an MDM. Uh, or the Manjaro Display Manager, which looks very, very similar to the Mint Display Manager. Um, it's gorgeous. It's right now the theme that I'm using. Let me see here. Login window. I'm using this particular theme, the clock and picture. Looks amazing. I mean, it really looks nice. It's an um, HTML-based display manager, themable. Looks just awesome. I really, really like it. Um, you can change the welcome message. I have it say, Welcome Lou. I know it's super, super creative, <coughs> excuse me, but you can change all sorts of other fe uh, um, preferences here, and this functionality has been taken away um, in, for instance, the GNOME Display Manager. You do not have access over a lot of these things like you used to, and in the Manjaro Display Manager, now you do, and it's gorgeous. It looks really, really nice, so I love that. Um, one of the other nice things, again, is this welcome screen. We'll go back to it. You know, as a new user, and again, Mint, Mint was doing this a long time ago, you know, they have some really uh, nice links that make sense. You know, there's a README, you've got your new features, the wiki, you have access to the Twitter, Facebook, and Google Plus page, um, links to the forum, the chat room, the mailing list, just really, really nice, and it adds just this nice little layer of polish, I think, to um, the distribution. I mentioned that the ISO 
is about 1.2 gigabyte download. All of your multimedia codecs are already installed out of the box, so you don't have to mess with that. If you've got music and videos and movies and so on, you can watch those right out of the box, so that's very, very nice. <clears throat> this is a custom installation on the hardware, so this is not a VirtualBox install. I'm running this natively um, on my PC, and I've tweaked it, obviously. This is not how it looks by default. I've got my own custom uh, theme here, an icon theme. I've got Docky down here at the bottom, which doesn't come uh, by default. I've also rearranged the top panel, um, but being that this is XFCE, a lot of things are very tweakable, and you know, I've heard that people think XFCE looks like a very dated desktop environment. In some ways, I would agree slightly. However, with certain tweaks, you can make it look, I think, really, really beautiful. Um, being that excess, it's XFCE, it's lightweight. So if you're using an older piece of hardware if, or if you have limited resources, you know, everything is super, super fast. I mean, I do have a beast of a computer, but even on something with a little bit older um, hardware, this is going to be very, very quick because we're not using a lot of memory. Um, we've got the whisker menu here. The whisker menu, and I've said this in my Linux Mint review, um, is a great menu. Uh, it's not part of XFCE, but it was built specifically for XFCE, and I do prefer it as opposed to the standard drop-down menu. Um, you can you know, search for anything that you like, um, and it's really, really fast, and I, I like the whisker menu. I'm glad that a lot of the modern XFCE distros are using whisker menu now as opposed to the standard um, menu system that XFCE comes with. Um, you know, in terms of, again, stability, this has been rock solid. Haven't had any crashes, haven't had any issues whatsoever. Um, so I think that uh, this particular release of Manjaro is really solid. For a kernel, they're not using the most bleeding edge kernel, but it's fairly up to date. We're using, whoops. 3.10.15. I believe this is what's considered the long-term support kernel. Um, I will be installing the 3.12 kernel as uh, soon as I can. I'll show you guys um, one quick package installation. So if I use um, Yelwert and we're going to do screen key. Screen key is the application that I use to display my keystrokes on um, screen when I'm doing certain tutorials and again this just goes to show that it's uh, also compatible with the Arch user repository so here's the package right there we're just gonna hit number one hit enter um, I'm not gonna edit the package build we're going to supply my password proceed with installation continue installing we're done so there's screen key. All right, this is screen key. So there we go. We um, just installed screen key from the AUR. So this is a really versatile distribution. Again, the XFCE desktop is very lightweight. It's very nimble. I think that with the custom tools that the Manjaro team is developing, you're going to see a lot of great things coming out of this distribution in the future. So if you like Bleeding Edge, if you like Stable, if you like a, a distribution that's being constantly worked on and developed uh, with a set of custom tools, and if you liked Arch but maybe didn't like some of the things that um, were difficult about using Arch to some users, such as the installation or proprietary drivers or multimedia codec installation, that sort of thing. Now again, if you're using Arch, a lot of this stuff is super easy to you. But if you're a newer user, and I already know what a lot of <laughs> Arch users are thinking, well, then you shouldn't be using Arch. Um, I think that's why Manjaro exists. It exists because Manjaro takes care of a lot of that for you. So again, I'm not the type of user that really needs all of that. However, that doesn't mean I don't like it. Um, I don't like to have to go through the command line to do my installation every time. I don't like to have to search down a, a ton of multimedia packages you know I like something like in Ubuntu they have a meta package the restricted extras that will install all those for you I like that in Manjaro it comes pre-installed already there's nothing wrong with that sort of thing so although I would consider myself a power user I don't who could you know obviously get all this stuff installed 
from the ground up by scratch, I don't want to have to do that all the time. And this is a great alternative for users who are either new and want to try something that's a rolling distro, bleeding edge software, or you're an experienced user but don't want to have to do all that manual work all the time. So as you can tell, I do jump distros to do videos and, and different tests and tutorials. So again, I'm, I'm wiping my hard drive and installing quite a bit. So using Arch Linux for me can at times get a little daunting and I know the argument is um, once you do it enough times it becomes very quick and I would say yes and you can also back up all your configs and so on and so forth. <laughs> I don't know why I always have to justify my Manjaro reviews. Um, I guess I have this fear of a bunch of angry Arch users out there. Um, but anyway, I, I really like Manjaro. Uh, I think this release is top notch. Uh, very, very stable. Um, it's met all my expectations of what I was um, hoping that it would be. And, you know, to the Manjaro team, uh, keep doing what you're doing. I think you're doing a fantastic job. If you like this review, please feel free to give it a thumbs up, share the video. And as always, I really appreciate your support. Thank you for watching. And until next time, we will catch you later.